Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. I am reporting live from Bangkok. I flew in here yesterday, and uh, I had a whole adventure that I will share with you. Um, in today's podcast, to give you a little theme, um, I'm excited to talk about how each of us has our unique power uh, that we are meant to shine into the world. And what does that mean? But basically, like the big download of that is motivating me to make this podcast right now is that I was talking with a friend this morning over breakfast and we were talking about how, you know, in the world right now, there's a lot of things going on. Like if you look at the news, there's just a shit ton of war, poverty, blah, 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 blah. And it feels the energy that I'm sensing in the world is that it feels that it is getting more intense and more aggressive, like this energy, this overall energy that we're feeling. Um, I am not one to focus on the negative or anything like this. Uh, I was actually, this conversation got sparked this morning because I was inviting my friend that I'm staying with in Bangkok to share what he's grateful for. And it just got into this discussion where we were talking about like, like he was sharing about the war that's happening right now in Israel and Palestine and also Ukraine and Russia. And he's just like, I, I just don't understand what we're doing as like a human species. Like, why are people not more trying to create more peace, you know, like, and what I said to him was that I feel like a big way, so this is the download, I feel that it is very um, prevalent in the world today that this, this feeling, it's like very natural to have this feeling of overwhelm, of like, I want to make the world a better place, but who am I? I'm just this one person, and you know, I talk to the people around me in my environment, my family, my friends, uh, my community, and it just doesn't seem like they're clicking in the same way or like it doesn't feel like people care as much as I do. Uh, I've, I've felt this a lot growing up. Um, and even in my community on Koh Phangan, like I'm like, hey, we can help the island. It's so easy. We can do this. And people are just like, yeah, okay. And I would get frustrated by this energy of this is kind of like, it just, it's like people give up before they even try to make a difference in the world. And what I realized, so I w used to get really frustrated and angry at this because I thought it was people being lazy or people just, yeah, taking this taking energy instead of like giving back. Like, how can we make the world a better place? How can we make Koh Phangan a better place? How can we add to the positive energy that we're currently receiving? Because for me, this is a very natural thing. I'm just constantly giving energetically. And also, you know, if I go somewhere, I, yeah, I, I would like to give back to the local community or to whatever. But this is the download, is that I realized over my, my many years of community leadership is it's not so much that people don't want to help. It's that they have been raised with a programming that they on their own is not capable of making a difference. So like... Basically, the programming that a lot of people have today is that, like, who am I? You know, I'm just this one person and I can't make a difference on my own. So maybe I can follow someone else or, you know, maybe I or I just sit here and complain because I'm overwhelmed and just basically end up not doing anything. And this is what I want to tell you is that each one of us can make a difference in our local communities, in a the global community, you have more power over making a difference in the world than you realize. And the reason why it has been so encouraged to disempower you in this way, I'm not going to get into conspiracy theories or anything like this, but it's a very natural progression of thought to understand that whoever is in charge of the current game that's being play played out politically in the world, it is in their best interest for you to believe that you don't have any power individually. Because then they want you to vote for them, and then they want you to believe in them, and then they want you to just not do anything, and so they can just control things. So if you're like me, and my friend I was having breakfast with, um, and you actually really care, and you're like, hey, I want to make the world a better place. Like, how do we do this? How do we, how do we, like, shape things for the better? Well, the first way is to 
create a vibrational reality. So basically like believe within yourself it is possible. This is the first step. Because if you don't believe that it's possible to make a difference, if you don't believe that you know, the world can actually get better, if you really believe that things are just going to keep getting worse and worse, then that's the reality you're going to face. That's the vi vibration that you're, that's the frequency you're vibrating to and that's what you're going to attract into your life. I'm trying to say this in like as much 3D terms and less esoteric because <laughs> my friends always joke, Brittany, you say all these things, but it's like super like, you know, spiritual esoteric. And I'm for me, the way I see reality is both, but I just really enjoy the esoterics. It's the witchy part of me. Um, but I'm trying to ex explain it more a grounded way. So basically like you have every single one of you who is listening to this, you have this opportunity to create change for the better in your world today. I'm not saying you need to go out and solve the war. <laughs> I'm not saying you need to like do anything that is beyond your current neighborhood. I'm talking about you on an individual frequency level. Because if you're listening to this, you are most likely what I call a star seed. And a star seed is someone who came into this lifetime in order to share your vibration with the world. And you're sharing your vibration by by being. And it, there's things that you can do, of course, but you have to be on a frequency that is already shining your light and allowing the universal energy to come through. So like literally, what can you do today? I invite you, this is a game, we can play it together. I invite you to when you go out of your house today, or if you're already out and you're listening to this, to smile at someone that you don't know. And for no other reason except for to share positive energy. Allow the universal energy that you receive just by purely enjoying the fact that we have this human existence. And smile at someone near you. When you're walking by, just smile at them. And what you'll notice is that first people will be very shocked because they're like, well, what, is, what does this person want? Or like, I'm just flat out surprised that a stranger is smiling at me. And then they will either smile back, which is just beautiful, or you might pass them before they have a, like a lot of times people are just in so much shock they don't know how to respond. And then you might pass them, like you might walk by them before they have a chance to respond. But I'm telling you that you have affected their life. You have already created a positive change in the world. A second thing that you can do, an invitation for you, is to talk to a stranger today. So whether you're in line paying for your coffee or you're at the grocery store or something, or you're just like waiting for the subway, like whatever it is, make conversation with someone next to you. Like for me, I do this a lot where like I'm at the gym and I see a woman who looks just so beautiful. Like I did this the other day. And I'll just go up to them and I'm just like, hey, I, I want to, can I tell you something? And usually like we all of us have our headphones on. So they're like, you know, they think something's wrong. And I'm like, I just want to tell you that you are so beautiful. Like this whole vibe is just working for you. And this one girl that I did to, I said this to the other day, she was like, oh my God, thank you. <laughs> and I know how much that actually means to people. You know, it really makes their day. And they actually say that like women, we appreciate we notice and appreciate other women's beauty in sometimes ways that men don't even like I heard this um, in the psychology class I took in university that like um, they gave this example of like, uh, OK, guys, what 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 outfit was your girlfriend wearing yesterday? And the guys were like, I don't know, like maybe they kind of remembered vaguely what she was wearing. And they're like, OK, ladies what outfit was your best friend, your best girlfriend wearing yesterday? And they're like, oh my God, she had this thing on and then she like this and her hair was like this and it looked so cute. And so the example was proving that psychologically um, without realizing that women, we actually dress up <laughs> for other women more because we appreciate how much effort goes into it. you know. And of course, men appreciate our beauty. I, I agree with this. But I'm just saying that if you're a woman, it means a lot if you give another woman a compliment. And if you're a guy and you want to give a woman a compliment that's beautiful, the energy that you do it in is a giving energy. Um, it's so interesting how full circle everything is. I want to share this story. So uh, example of this, which is going to really be funny for me, 
in my synchronistic timeline of everything in the world. I was sitting in the sauna at Zentiva, uh, which is the gym I go to on Koh Phangan. Shout outs to Zentiva, I love it. Um, although I feel like <laughs> Faraday and I shared about it too much because during high season it just gets so overpacked that I can't even go there. Anyways, first world island problems. Um, I was in Zen I was in the sauna the other day and it's really beautiful and it's like they just built this really new one. This new one that's beautiful. It can fit like 15 people in there maybe. This dry sauna. And this guy is sitting across from me and he's like, can I tell you something? And I'm like, yeah, okay, what's up? And he's like, I just really want to let you know that you're really beautiful. Like your whole body, like everything, just very beautiful. And I was like, oh, thank you. And then he got really shy and he was like, um, I just, I just hope you don't think I was like objectifying you or something. I just wanted to let you know you're, and I was like, no, no, I get it. Like I, 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 I couldn't explain it at the time, but I was like, basically I was just like, no, I really feel that you just wanted to give me a compliment. So thank you. And then a couple of weeks later, I was like thinking of this interaction because I, w I always am like thinking of, you know, the energy between how people connect to each other and like what makes someone feel good about the connection and what makes someone f like without even understanding uh, intellectually or consciously, like sometimes you just get this icky feeling when someone says something to you and it could be the same words someone else is saying, but it's because it's the energy that they're saying it with, right? And so I saw this guy at the, I'm saying this guy because I can't remember his name. I have this thing where I'm actually, um, I have a very hard time remembering people's names because they actually say that like tribally, like when we grew up in tribes, uh, we grew up uh, around like, you know, thousands of years ago when we had a tribe and we're like foraging, um, usually had like about 150 people in your tribe <coughs> and our brains, a lot of our brains are not wired to hold more names than 150. Like they say, like in general, that's kind of the limit and, um, I grew up in a community where, you know, every summer we would go to these religious conventions with like 10,000, 15,000 people. So like I grew up in this huge community where even as a kid, I had like maxed out this limit like a million times over and throwing so many parties and holding community and running so many businesses and traveling all over the world. I have really, I just, I can, if I see someone's face, I can know, oh yeah, I know you from here, but I, they will sell, tell me their name and I just cannot anyways. So I can't remember this guy's name. Let's call him Young Ken because he reminds me of a young Ken Barbie uh, in a good way. He's super sweet, uh, but he's like very blonde and like a Ken Barbie doll. Anyway, so Ken, we'll call him Ken. I saw him a couple of weeks later at the gym and he said to me, um, so I couldn't remember his name. And, and I was like, he's like, do you remember me? And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, you're the guy from the sauna. And I said, I wanted to tell you that I was thinking of our interaction and I realized why why I felt good. And he was like, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super interested to hear what this is. Cause he's like, sometimes I give women compliments and I feel like they take it well. And sometimes they don't take it well. And I was like, this is, this is what I realized is it's the energy. If you're giving a compliment as, especially as a man to a woman, if you're giving a compliment with the energy of giving, like I'm giving this compliment to you unconditionally, I don't expect anything back. I'm not trying to you know, get a date out of you. I'm not trying to get your attention or, you know, I'm not trying to get anything out of you. I'm just giving you a compliment. And this is the energy I told him. I, I felt this energy from you when we were in the sauna that you just were appreciating my beauty. And I really enjoyed that. And that's like every woman loves to be appreciated, right? Especially if it's in the energy of giving and the person doesn't expect anything back. And I said to him, like, you know, a lot of times when uh, women don't like it, when a guy gives her a compliment, it's because she feels this energy of taking, even though he's saying something really nice to her on the surface, like, oh, you look beautiful or, you know, like your body or whatever. Um, the energy is like below the surface is like, I want something like maybe I want to fuck you. Maybe I want I want to date you. Maybe I want I want you in some way. And there's nothing wrong with desiring anyone it's just that when you're sharing a compliment it's really important um i think it's really important to to share compliments with this unconditional giving energy because that's to me that is um like a positive upward spiral <laughs> again i'm speaking in like esoteric terms 
from an energetic perspective, positive energy expands. And so when you give positive energy without expecting anything, you actually receive more than than you could ever have rece- received if you had been trying to actually get something. This is the oxymoron of everything. This is the ironic part of life. Is the more that you give unconditionally, the more you receive exponentially. And if you're running around trying to take things and get things and being in this taking energy, you're actually going to get a lot less than if you had just shined your light and you know give compliments without wanting anything back and just been a nice person in the world. So back to making a difference in in your everyday life. I really, um, I really invite you to like, yeah, go into the world today and smile at people. And I know, I know that this is hard. When I left, you know, on Copenhagen, people smile at each other all the time. Like you'll be on the scooter, and people are just in general. Even the Thai people and Burmese people, the local people there, they're, everyone's just smiling because they're just like, we live on a tropical island. We get that life is one big joke. And yeah, we're living a really great version of this, this video game of life. Like we're living in this paradise <laughs> place. And, um, and in general, I feel like people are more conscious and just grateful to be alive, you know. But of course, it's because we live in a beautiful place with beautiful people who care about each other. We have a really nice community there, and the life is beautiful. So when you're when I went when we moved to Berlin last summer, um, I was being my normal Copenhagen self, and I was smiling at everyone, and people were not smiling back at people were not smiling back at me. They were you know and and I recognize now how much energy. Like I really understood when I lived in Berlin last year, like how much energy it takes to be a light worker, like be someone who is actually shining your light brightly in the world where you're not getting that reflections back, like those reflections of like people smiling back at you and like, you know, because this is the energy coming back to us. And so it's really important that you have your community. So or even if it's online, like someone, some place where you can go to and it could be these podcasts it could be whoever is inspiring for you where you go and you tap into this vibration of we care and things matter and we can make a difference in the world for the better and like just this reflection that like life is about taking like taking chances and taking risks and going on adventures and trusting the universe that everything's going to be okay because it is going to be okay. Most of the world, this is what I talked about in my last podcast, most of the world lives in this beta frequency of fear and reaction and like fight or flight of just like, all I need to do is get like security and I just, I don't want to, I don't, oh no, no, like we logically, we should not do that because this is, you know, like we have our five-year plan and it's like, that's lizard brain. Not going to go into what that means, but basically it like that is you just being a a follower in the world. And there's nothing wrong. Like I of course invite and choose stability and security financially and emotionally in my life. And also the point of us being in these bodies is to grow our consciousness. And we can do this in a really fun way. Uh, of course, in a way that feels yummy in our bodies. And actually, it's your divine right as a human to just feel good in your body. I was giving this human design reading to someone the other day who's German. And she was like, yeah, like for so much of my life, I've been so programmed to, I have to do X, Y, and Z. Like I have to work and, you know, do these hard things in the world, whatever they are, in order to feel that she's allowed to feel good in her body. Like, and that just blows my mind. <laughs> I'm like, no, we get to feel good in our body all the time. Like this is our human right is to feel yummy in our body all the time, just purely for being alive. Like we deserve to feel good and to feel safe and calm and in our power and inspired and activated and like feeling safe enough that you can like, like having this firm foundation of safety and by that I mean trust in the universe that you are able to launch off like a launch pad you know like like a rocket going off 
you're like uh, you have this firm foundation so you can blast off and go on all these adventures like your soul has this really epic timeline play like lined out for you and it doesn't need to look like anyone else's timeline it doesn't need to look like anyone else's lives it doesn't need to be you know from a mainstream 3d accomplishment level like you make x amount of money and you have these success no it, it's just like whatever is your personal excitement whatever is your soul's growth and this could be connecting to people this could be building community this could be p like being an artist this could be building an eco village whatever it is like making a difference in your personal world and through that I mean like shining your light and through that I mean doing what actually brings you joy and choosing to be a person that cares choosing to be a person that shows up in your community in your family in your friend group in your partnership and you're like hey we're doing this together I care how can I show up even better in a way that makes you feel more supported in a way that makes you feel more nourished because I care and this is why I'm doing this not because I'm getting anything out of this but purely because this is who I choose to be in my life you know and when you are this person just unconditionally because you realize this is like what matters then <laughs> let me tell you your life is going to change super quickly for the better and by no hard work on your part you don't have to work hard. You don't have to like struggle. You don't have to do anything that doesn't feel good. It can all feel good all the way. And I think that's a big belief that I invite you to change. If you have this belief that things have to be hard. If you have a belief that things have to be hard in order for it to be worth it, I invite you to change that. Because things, things can feel good in your body all the way. And you can go on all the adventures and you can have all the connection and love and community and it can just feel good all the time so yeah i came to bangkok yesterday the story is i don't know if i shared this in my last podcast that my girlfriends and i decided to come we decided to go to bank. We decided to go to Burning Man like a couple weeks ago. So we booked our flights um, to. Um, we booked our flights to. The states, like from Bangkok, but we forgot to book our flights from, Koh Phangan to Bangkok. And so when we went to book our flights like this week, like I f we just forgot. And then on Monday this last week, I was like, oh, we need to book our flights to Bangkok. And usually you can get like a direct flight from Samui, the next island over. And it's like an hour flight or something. So the whole, the whole like going to Samui, maybe the whole thing takes about three hours, you know, just like getting there, checking in, all the things. There was absolutely no flights, like no direct flights left to Bangkok on Monday and we're trying to book for Sunday or Monday of the next week. This is like not normal. I think it's um I think it's European holidays um in like like everyone's coming out to the island because there's a lot of like families and stuff with kids. Long story short, everyone like my girlfriends and I are all just trying to like get to Bangkok to make sure we get on our flight today. And I ended up needing to fly out of Saratani, which is you have to take a two hour and a half boat ride and then an hour and a half bus and uh, the whole thing took like eight hours to get to Bangkok which normally takes me door to door like two and a half three hours um and my plane was late also like so I got to the airport and then the plane was like an hour late anyways I got to Bangkok I got here and just like travel stuff, you know, you got to go with the flow. Like I actually enjoyed it. I made myself, I edited the podcast I released yesterday. I, you know, I watched some TV. I've been watching the show called Normal People. Oh my God, it made me cry. This is also why I made this podcast because like there's some pretty dark moments in this show, but it's really just about two people who love each other so much that they have a hard time allowing themselves to be together. Like they're so afraid of losing the love that they don't actually open their heart all the way but then by the end of the show it's really beautiful like I just I, it's only one season I finished it yesterday 
if you want to check it out, it's called Normal People. Fair warning, there's some pretty dark bits in the middle of it, of the season, that I skipped some of it because it was triggering for me. Um, but in general, anyways, I watched that yesterday, and it was really nice. And I just kind of go into, the, like, this subspace when I'm traveling where I'm, like, in the super gamma frequency where I'm just, like, meditating and, like, I get on the airport, f- like... L- I get in the, f- I go on the floor and I like do yoga moves and everyone's like laughing at me, but also I feel like I'm inspiring and activating them because why can't we do yoga wherever we are? And so I got here to Bangkok and, um, met up with my friend Dario, who I've known for a couple of years. He's been coming to the play parties for like two or three years now. And he lives here in Bangkok and works in a really beautiful job th- that I think he's a very private person. He's a 6'2 generator. If you know human design, you understand what that means. Basically, his body is a hermit and he likes to be private. But he wa- has a really amazing job here, like helping people a lot, um, making a big impact in the world. And uh, <laughs> he's also Italian. So I told him I'm like vegan and gluten free. <laughs> and he's like, I want to take you to this really amazing Italian restaurant. So my flight was like an hour late. And so I got to his house at like 10 and he had called his friend's restaurant, which he claims is the best Italian pizza in uh, Bangkok. And, and they held the restaurant open for us to come. And Dario has this really, (laughs) really fast motorbike. Um, We were wearing helmets and um, (laughs) he like went really fast on the road. And I didn't realize that he was doing this to kind of just like get a rise out of me. Because I was just like closing my eyes, like internally screaming. And then when we got to the restaurant, I was like, why were you going so fast? And he's like, I was just trying to see if you were going to scream. And I'm like, I just like hit him like, stop it. Funny things. But uh, we got to the restaurant and we're like the only ones there. And it was amazing pizza. I was very happy. I don't eat pizza in general because I don't eat it often because I'm gluten free. And so, um you know, a lot of places don't have it or they just like, it's not very good. But this one was really amazing. And then he um, took me to this like really cute, like underground speakeasy jazz, jazz club. And we met my friend Raquel, who I'm going to Burning Man with because uh, she's in Bangkok. And wow, it was just so beautiful. Um, and I was just like, this is so cool. Like it's like a whole side of Bangkok I haven't seen yet. Uh, and it was just really, really fun. Like I really loved Dario in the sense that like, we're just really good friends. Like we can just sit and talk about things forever. And his, his, the work that he's doing in the world is like helping people, like really helping people. And he's so passionate about it. And he's always asking himself, like, how can I help people even more? How can I make more impact? And I'm all about this too. So, and also we just joke and have fun. And I love Italians because they're just so vibrant. You know, there's something about like Latin American culture, African culture, and then like the Mediterranean side of Europe uh, where they just, they live with their heart open and so passionately and so like just so alive (laughs) and this is how I live. So uh, it was just really nice to hang out with someone again, like after my last breakup where they're just so vibrant and alive and heart open and sharing their emotions and asking me to share my emotions and like, you know, why didn't you just scream? Why didn't you just yell at me and tell me you didn't want me to do it? And I'm like, oh, I just forgot that this was a safe space to do this. Like, I'm just so used to shutting down my emotions around people, uh, around men. So it's just like because of past situations like this where people were getting really overwhelmed by my normal human emotions. And so it's just very refreshing to hang out with someone who's like, no, give me more. I need more emotions. Let's talk about this. Let's go deeper into this. And so my feminine side was very much... (sighs) <sighs> feeling happy and yummy and uh, it was just nice to be taken care of and just like I didn't like I when we were leaving the house because we were rushing to get to the Italian restaurant before they closed they were like holding it open for us and um, and I'm like what should I bring and he's like don't bring anything bring your phone like I, I got everything I got it all covered and I was just like wow this is this is really nice because usually I'm the one taking care of everyone. (laughs) Um, Of course, I've had like a lot of beautiful men in my life in partnership where they take care of me and just like there's something where, of course, I'm totally capable of taking care of myself. I'm really good at taking care of myself and paying for myself and creating my own financial abundance. 
And also there is something about just being with someone where I don't have to think about anything in the 3D. It makes me, it creates space for me to drop more into my body <sighs> and just feel yummy in my body and feel my emotions and be like just this flowy feminine goddess. And when I'm in that energy, that's also really nice for everyone around me to be in that energy with me because I share this vibration, you know. So it's a win-win for everyone. And when we got back from the jazz club to his, he has this really beautiful uh, condo here in Bangkok. Um, he uh, has a jacuzzi on the roof and an infinity pool. And so we went up there and just like had the best time in the jacuzzi tub, just talking. And, you know, we, I told them, I just want to be friends. Like I'm in a mode where I just, my body needs a lot of space in order to build a relationship, like basically trust within myself, like my relationship to myself that I can trust who I'm picking as a partner. Um, because I understand that my, um, in the past, my choice of men has been kind of my blind spot. And so now I'm like, even if I'm interested in someone, I'm just like, let's take it so slow. And you know, I actually find that it's more intimate. Someone said this one time and I agree with it. If you're attracted to someone and you sleep next to them, like w before anyone's ever had sex with each other, you know, like basically you sleep in the same bed with someone and you choose consciously to not have sex with someone, even if you're attracted to them. That's actually more intimate than if you had just had sex and went to sleep. Because vibrationally, you're like, <laughs> you're really turned on and you're really like, it's almost like this, yeah, it's like foreplay, this like build up of energy. So yeah, we were just having a really great time just connecting and cuddling and and talking, like just talking and talking and talking until like 3 a.m. and laughing and just joking around with each other. Um, and it was just really beautiful. I had a really great time last night. Um, and this morning we woke up and we're cuddling some more. And then he made me a very Italian breakfast <laughs> um, and made it vegan for me, <laughs> lactose free, which I loved. Um, and yeah, and then we just talked more about like, the impact in the world and he was getting a little discouraged about like why don't people care more like I try and activate everyone around me to um like care and make the world a better place and do their part and and I said this is why I made this podcast I was like I really feel like one people feel like they don't have they get overwhelmed just straight up they don't they don't feel like they personally can make a difference and this is why I'm telling you yes you can just by just these little things that I shared with you. And also the more that you clean, I want to say clean up, but basically the more that you get into alignment with your own vibration, the more you clean up your vibration so that you are in this centered, we call it gamma frequency. So it's like this very centered, like you're in unity consciousness. You understand that we're all connected. You understand that this is one big game of life so that we can grow our consciousness and you understand that the universe has your back completely. And with this knowingness that you're in, you create that reality. That's like, that's like God mode, you know, like you are the creator of your reality. And it's this constant game with the universe and this constant relationship of you trusting the universe so that you, you don't have to do everything. You know, you're just this vessel for the energy to move through and for you to enjoy this beautiful life. The second part is that I actually feel that a lot of the world is looking for good leadership. So I want to share this with you because most of you who are listening to this, you're actually meant to be one of these leaders. You know, we have this perception that leadership in the world is a very negative thing because traditionally most of us don't have role models of good leadership, of people using power to help the people to give back and support, you know, like in tribal times, uh, a leader of the tribe, they're not there to take all the money and all the women and like, you know, do whatever they want. They are there to serve. They are there to, you know, dedicate their life to protecting their tribe, protecting their people, helping make sure that there is enough for everyone, making sure there's maybe abundance, before, you know, like basically leaving their tribe in a better state than how they should 
you know, received the leadership. So when they leave the leadership, th their legacy is to leave the, their tribe better than how it started when they, when they became a leader. And somewhere along the way, in the last thou couple thousand years, we have really lost this. We've had leadership where it's been a very negative thing for the people. It doesn't matter what culture you're in or country you're from. This is playing out all over the world po politically. Uh, and even in communities, even in religious communities, we see this. Um, it's like, uh, you know, they say, like, absolute power corrupts absolutely. But I don't agree with that. I don't agree that power equals someone becomes becoming corrupt. Of course, if you believe this, this is the difference. If you believe that it is you who are actually in charge of things, like, then yes, your ego is going to take charge, and you're going to let your physical mind run the show, and then you're going to believe, yeah, this is I did this. The ulterior, the other option is to realize that you are in service to the people. So say you're a leader um, in a way that you want to do what's right, you want to make the world a better place. You use this power and this resources and these connections and um, this like support from your community that is l looking up to you, and you use this to allow the energy to move through and just realize that your body and your you are a vessel for you know source energy universe energy god energy to move through you and make the world a better place so it's not about you anymore it's about serving the people and allowing the energy to move through and you know yes people are like we need more egalitarian societies like basically where things are equal and democratic and all these things I agree with this. Also, even in those societies, people still need leadership. People want to look up to someone because not everyone is made to be a leader. Not everyone, and that's okay. That is the way we're made as a society. If everyone was a leader, there would be no one to follow. <laughs> there would be no, like... And of course, on a personal sovereignty level, I feel like the goal is to realize that each of us has this... Um, all of us have it inside of us to be the leader of ourselves, like the sovereign individual. This means like you are an independent soul realizing that you have your own source connection. And also, in addition to that, when we're in communities, when we're in societies, we need to come together as people in order to make the world a better place. Like we need to work together. So yeah, there's personal sovereignty. There's you like in your connection to source, your personal game that you're playing with the universe. And also a bigger part of that is when we all come together as a community, as a society, as a religion, whatever it is, whatever group that you're coming together in. And people need to lead those groups. And so we need more conscious leadership. We need more people who are willing to allow people to follow them, willing to allow themselves to be this activation for others to feel empowered, this this role model for people that like, yeah, look at this person, look at how they're living their life, look at how they're choosing to use their energy to help people. I want to be more like this person. Um, so the invitation for you is, could this be you? Could you allow yourself to be this role model? And first it takes you cleaning up your own energy, you coming into alignment with yourself. In order to be a true leader, you need to be able to have discipline. And this takes um, you know, doing like having your own meditative practice where you are resourcing yourself throughout the day. And this can be breath work. This can be meditation. This can be, um, visualization. This can be like, s s there's so many tools that you can, whatever is your permission slip to get into your center. So it takes the discipline to keep building this up so that you have this relationship with your somatic body, like your nervous system understands that when it goes under stress there's tools that I you can use to resource yourself and stay in your center so that's one thing and the other thing is that you just have to <laughs> choose that you're going to allow yourself to be seen in this way like it's not an e again it's not an egotistical thing like I for me my version of leadership like is to activate people, to inspire them, to give them resources, to 
like help people. <laughs> we need more people like me who are willing to put themselves out there and help people and allow people to listen to them. And this is why I make the courses that I make, like this one that I'm starting in September is like, because I'm like, I actually m would love to activate more people to be leaders. And in order to do that, I need to give them tools. I need to give them resources so that they can stay in alignment with themselves because the true vibration of leadership is that it doesn't matter what's happening externally. You are able to stay in your center emotionally, vibrationally, all of it. Because when you're able to stay in your center, then you can be this vibration that other people can look at as an example. Like look at, look at Brittany. She had this thing happen to her and she chose to look at it on the bright side. She chose to stay grounded, ask herself, what is the opportunity here? Like yesterday morning, I took Afro to the beach and the whole week I was like, I need to get my oil changed on my bike. I need to get my bike fixed. I need to get just a checkup on my scooter. And I kept putting it off, putting it off. And then like literally 10 minutes before my taxi is coming, I'm at the beach with Afro to walk her and I get on my scooter. So last little scooter ride, five minutes to my house. And my bike doesn't start. My bike is still parked at 7-Eleven <laughs> right next to the beach. Uh, some friends are going to handle it. But I sat there and I was like, okay, the taxi is coming in five minutes. And I still need to finish packing. And I need to get home. And I could sit there and I could freak out. Old Brittany would have completely had a meltdown in that moment. And just gotten really anxious, really upset. And, you know, just panicked. New Brittany is like... I literally said to myself, stay in your center and what's the opportunity here? There's always an opportunity for connection, for abundance, whenever anything like this happens. And I really believe this. And so this is my reality I create. And right next to the 7-Eleven, there's a coffee shop we all go to called Indigo. And I remember seeing a friend of mine uh, sitting out front. Um, and we're not close friends, but like we're in the community together. You know, we show up for each other when we need to. And so I walked over there with Afro and my bag. I had just gotten like a bunch of bag of supplies that I needed to bring home. And I was like, hi, um, so my bike just broke down and I need to go to the boat in like 10 minutes. And I was, just, and he's like, you need a ride? And I'm like, yeah. I, he, he was like, you need a ride to the pier? And he was like willing to give me a ride to the pier, which is like 15, 20 minutes away. I said, no, I just need a ride to my house, which is like three minutes away. And he's like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Let's go. I don't know how Afro is going to be on the bike. I'm like, oh, yeah, she just jumps right on. And he was like, OK, up, up, up. And she jumped up and he was like, oh, this is so cute. Like and he said to me, we were driving to my house. He was like, thank you so much for asking me. Like, this makes me feel happy that I could show up for you today. Like, thank you for being willing to ask for help. And I was like, you do not realize how much you just saved my butt because um yeah, I didn't know who else to call in this moment because like, I was kind of like on the verge of panicking and I just, you just kept coming into my mind, like just go over there and see if he's still at the coffee shop. And yeah, and so basically he was happy to show up for a friend and I think this is also a masculine quality of like, I do things for people I care about. This makes me happy. Like I really do believe that men, we need more, we need to give them more opportunities to show up for us. And I think a lot of us women are like, we can do it on our own. But really, like, let them show up for you. They love to. You know, it makes them happy. And, like, because they just love you. It's not, they don't need anything. And that's how I felt with this guy, this friend of mine. He was like, I just wanted to show up for you. Thank you for giving me an opportunity, you know. And so I was able to go home, pack my bag. The taxi was already there. He was chill. He just waited for me. And <laughs> pack my bags. And my, my cleaning ladies <laughs> were just like, you're leaving right now. And I'm like, yeah. And like all of my stuff was like all around my suitcase. And I'm like, and all of this needs to get in here right now. And so they like both sat on my suitcase to smash it down so that I could zip it up. And then they carried my suitcase out to the taxi while I like, said goodbye to Afro and like closed out the house. <sighs> and so for me, this is a perfect, it's a small, a small example, but it's a perfect example of I could have definitely freaked out and instead I stayed in my center, I stayed grounded, I understood that everything's happening for me and I asked myself what's the opportunity here and I just like literally the whole game of life is just staying in your center, staying grounded in your center, understanding that everything's happening for you and that you deserve as a soul 
to feel good in your body purely for existing. You don't need to do anything first. You don't need to earn anything. You just you just enjoy. And then from that vibration, you can build everything beautiful in your life. Ah, so that's my little yummy story for you. I'm going to go to the gym now. There's a really nice gym in his building. And then I'm going to <laughs> literally, as I look around his house right now, there is stuff of mine everywhere. Like last night, because I got ho- got to his house, and then he was like, "Okay, the we need to get there." And, blah, blah. and so I'm like running around and just like throwing things and taking a shower really fast. And he's just sitting there like looking at his watch, like trying not to feel like we need to go. And I was laughing at him, like I feel like we're already a married couple, where you're like, "We need to get out of the house. Come on, let's go." And we were just both laughing, but it was really fun. But yeah, my stuff's everywhere. So I need to do one of these moments again where I'm like, okay, somehow all of this is going to fit into my bag. <laughs> I don't know how that's going to happen. But yeah, I get on the plane today at 4.30 p.m. And we fly to San Francisco. And from there, we're going to immediately rent a car and drive uh, to Reno. Because my friend Raquel has a camper van in Reno that we're going to um, use for Burning Man. And it's just really interesting, the full circle of life, because I'm flying immediately into San Francisco, and we're probably going to drive right through Sacramento, and I'm born and raised in Sacramento. Um, So, yeah, it's just funny, the circle of life, it all starts. Some some friends were asking, have you let your family know that you're coming? And I was like, no, not yet. (laughs) Like, one step at a time. Like, first it was like, get off the island. But basically, I think today when I get to the airport and I check into the lounge the VIP lounge I think I will start sending messages and just start letting everyone know I'm coming um there was just a lot of like life things I was handling on the island and emotional things I was going through that so the idea of opening this box of family stuff was a little overwhelming for me but now I'm more resource resource and really going on adventures having this new energy it really gives me so much life force energy and I love it uh so yeah and I'm in full trust that whatever is meant to happen is going to happen when I go to the States and see my family. And if nothing else, I will hang out with all of my amazing chosen family and my friends and have an amazing time at Burning Man. So I'm sending you all some of this yummy vibration and I will see you in the next podcast. Have a beautiful day.